A very good evening, everybody. Welcome to a deep dive into US, Hong Kong, and Singapore stocks. I'm Minghui from Flip Features, and this webinar is held in collaboration with Trading Central. Starting off the webinar tonight will be Ms. Dominica. She'll be sharing an overview of the goodies you can get from Trading Central, which includes newsletters, indicators, features, and more. After which, we will hear from Mr. Ming Lam, Deputy Head of Research at Trading Central. He'll be sharing with us the latest macroeconomic trends and his observations on the stock market. Before I pass this on to the speakers, I'd just like to inform you that if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, please feel free to drop them into the questions box as we will have a live Q&A session towards the end. And now without further ado, let's have Dominica speak to us. Hello, and welcome to uh, the webinar. Uh, my name is Dominika Wach, and I am Client Success Specialist um, in Trading Central. I take care of Philip Futures and Trading Central day-to-day -day relationship. And today I'm here to tell you more about um, one of um, the latest addition to um, Trading Central tools available for Philip Futures clients, which is um, TC Market Bus. Um, so what is Market Buzz? Market Buzz is a refreshing take on financial news and analysis, uh, which was awarded the most uh, innovative new product in the Technical Analyst Award last year. Um, and now I'm going to show you where you can find the, uh, the, the tool Market Buzz on the MT5 uh, platform for Philip Futures. So um, you should uh, just open your platform, uh, go to the navigator uh, window, and then scroll until you're going to see the expert advisors. And under expert advisors trading central, you need to double click. You're going to get the small pop-up window where you should uh, click OK. Just wait a second, and then there is a pop-up window with two uh, tools. One of them is uh, feature ideas. We might talk about it uh, sometime uh, in the future. But um, when you click on the tab TC Market Bus, you're going to get the amazing news and analysis tool that I want to tell you a bit more about. So um, here uh, you get the the dashboard with the bubbles um, and straight away you can see uh, what is this tool about so uh, basically the bigger the bubble the more buzz about the specific asset as you can see the the biggest buzz is currently about uh, bitcoin of course um, okay just uh, before we uh, dive deep into the details i will tell you a few more things about tc market buzz so um, it's, uh, it solves the infobicity problem, which is too much news and social media and not too much time to digest it. Buzz helps you to easily spot which stocks and topics um, are top buzzing and it delivers a smarter news experience so you can read less and know more. Um, our proprietary natural language algorithm crunch and collects the massive amount of professional news articles, social media posts, and individual blog published online every day to, pro to provide a concise, accurate view on what's buzzing in the market. Uh, in an instant, you gain a reliable view on the crowd's impact on investment idea, and you can follow the discussion easily. Um, okay, so on, as, as I mentioned, this is the landing page. Mm, and here you got uh, the bubbles with all the instruments available on the platform to trade. So anything that you have in Market Watch, it will appear as a bubble. Mm, the bigger the bubble, the more online buzz is there. Um, you can uh, filter. So, for example, you can see uh, what was stop buzzing 24 hours, or you can filter by seven days, 30 days, and 90 days. Uh, you can also filter by um, specific uh, asset classes, currencies, cryptos, commodities, indices, stocks. And if you, for example, go to stocks, um, you can also filter by countries. So, for example, if you are interested only by uh, Hong Kong, you just tick 
and you get uh, the specific um, specific uh, assets just from Hong Kong. Or you can also filter by sectors. So if you are into banks, you get just the bubbles with the uh, banking sector. Um, okay. Um, you can get a unique insight on the specific financial instrument just by clicking through. So if you hover over the, the bubble, you get like um, an overview of, um, of what's going on. Uh, on JP Morgan, there was uh, 469 publications uh, in last 24 hours, uh, which uh, is 463 news and six on social media. And now if we click on the bubble, uh, you get um, the whole dashboard of the uh, of the instrument so um here you get um uh, you 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 are here to discover um the news metrics like price to coverage history uh, the most discussed topics which are here um how negative positive uh is the the coverage or the orientation and um, you can browse through the uh, actual feed of the news, um, which is uh, related to this specific instrument. So um, in a glimpse of an eye, you just uh, can uh, orientate yourself and decide if you wish to uh, proceed with, um, for, example, for example, buying this, uh, this stock, um, or uh, maybe uh, you would like to hold. Okay, um, now uh, another amazing feature uh, on the TC Market Bus um, is that you can uh, build your own watch list. So if you click here, um, I have just a small, uh, small watch list, uh, but um, you can, uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can change the view from uh, from bubbles to to the linear. And uh, this way you can see also uh, how much more news um, uh, exactly are related to the specific product. And uh, the other thing is that uh, you can easily explore the, the news desk, which you can find here on the top left corner. Uh, so from here you can discover the top news from quality sources uh, found by our uh, AI. You can click on any article and uh, read more. And if you want to get even more details, you can just click on Start Continue, and you will get to the uh, to the page where the article was um, published. And what's more, uh, if you are interested only on some specific news. Um, so you don't want to waste time on browsing all the news of the world, um, you can create your own feed. So you just click here. And for example, I have a, a feed on Singapore where I um, added um, some uh, related um, content from Singapore, uh, you know, Singapore Airlines, uh, Singapore to uh, US dollar. And when you uh, add content to just, for example, type from here and you add um, Singapore Exchange. The feed refreshes and you get even more news that will be related to the specific topic that you are searching for. Um, all right, so that's that's TC Market Pass. It's, it's right there on the platform. I also wanted to mention that Philip Future is uh, doing a great job because um, they uh, they are doing the overview of uh, some specific instruments every day. And um, in the toolbox on the bottom of the platform, in the mailbox, you can find um, related uh, uh, news uh, articles um, that uh, they are creating for you. Uh, if you click here, this is the daily bus from uh, from today, it will open on the separate page, uh, a report that looks like this. Mm. So you get not only the, the technical analysis also from Trading Central, like uh, 
the preference scenario, uh, alternative scenario, uh, but you also, also get the latest pass on the specific um, asset. And if you wish to download the um, plugin on your platform, you just click here and you go to the uh, Philly Futures uh, website, you download the plugin, and um, here you go. You can use this amazing tool. Uh, that would be it from me. I'm passing the mic now to my colleague, Ming. Hello, hello. Well, um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, um, friends of Philip Futures and Trading Central. And uh, this is our monthly event. We meet again, and every month I look forward to this event in which I can share with you what I have observed in the market, okay, for the, for the month. You know, you know I am uh, an analyst with uh, Trading Central and I read the market every day, day and night. And uh, I really, I have something to share with you on a monthly basis. So welcome again. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, maybe some of you may, may know who I am already. So we, I have uh, started this series since uh, February of Mar or, or March, okay? So, uh, as, uh, as far as I know, we will continue this series. So uh, I hope you will join again. Okay, now today, I, I will share with you, as the topic say, uh, I will share with you um, my views on the macroeconomic, on some shares, particularly shares in the US, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And uh, please note that the, those shares, stocks, I will talk about in this webinar could be easily found on the Philip Futures CDF, CD, CFD platform. Okay, those stocks I'm going to talk about should have good trend, interesting stories. Okay, so I hope you will you really enjoy it. Okay, okay, so let's start. Oh, what's that? What's that? Okay, sorry, I I have to. Uh, bring out my PowerPoint again. Okay. Are you still with me? Mm, I have some uh, technical problem maybe. Yes, um, we can see your screen and we can hear you. Okay, but uh, it seems I... Uh, there is uh, something wrong with the, I think, uh, webinar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, uh, some, some, uh, some technical glitch. Okay, never mind. We are on track again. <laughs> Just like the stock market, okay? I, I will tell you, the stock market is on track again. All right, all right. right. Okay, now. Uh, the basic stuff, I want to share with you first of all the basic stuff, uh, the, the mac macroeconomic uh, uh, environment. What is happening? So you, you have, I, I, I understand you have heard, you have listened a lot of stories uh, on, on some topics like inflation, blah, 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 and uh, market will, will correct, will crash, blah, 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 something like this. So step by step, let's go forward. So now I, I, I would tell you, this is market US manufacturing PMI. Above, uh, above 50, it is expansion. Below 50, contraction. Easy, right? Easy to understand. Look at the chart, please. Now, the latest one for May, 61.5 above uh, expectation. And you can see the manufacturing, uh, manufacturing sector in the US is expanding. All right, let's go. Apart from manufacturing, we have surface, PMI 70.1. Look at this, look at this, 70.1, the latest figure for May. Amazing, all right? How about jobless 
claim. This is the initial jobless claims. The Labor Department of US will report it on a weekly basis every every Thursday. So today, later, you will have uh, uh, another latest number. So last week, we have what? 444,000. It is the lowest level since the pandemic era. Now, so let's conclude a little bit. We have higher manufacturing sector data, higher service sector data, and no jobless claims. Okay? The market, clearly, the market, the, I mean the economic economy of the US is recovering. A lot of about that. Okay? Now, this one, consumer price, uh, CPI, okay? In April, the this is the latest data, okay? In April, it rose 4.2% year on year. It is the highest growth in 13 years, okay? Well, 4.2% year on year, you think it is nothing, right? I, I can tell you, it, 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 is, it is huge. You know that, I have to tell you, the Federal Reserve of US, the central bank, has set a target, a goal, that uh, at 2%, 2.0, 2.0%, uh, it, 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 will, it, it will say, hey, if the inflation, if consumer price, the price grow 2% per year in a particular month, it will reach our goal. Of course, they always say, well, we will exercise flexibility, something like this, okay? I can tell you, 4.2% year-on-year growth is big, is big, okay? Of course, we have a consumer price, we have producer, producer price, year-on-year -year growth, 6.2% in April. You know what? This is the highest level on record, okay? What's going on? What's going on? Now, this is what? This is the U.S. Fed funds target rate. In April uh, last month, the, the latest uh, meeting of the Federal Reserve, they set the interest rate, key interest rate, recorded Fed funds target rate at near to zero. They, they have two uh, bands. One is zero and, and the upper band is 0.25%. 0 0.25%. 0 okay, you see, we still have extra, extra low interest rate. Maybe a side note for you, this interest rate, this kind of interest rate is the lowest, is the lowest level in about, well, 2000 years, according to some statistics, okay? So if you are borrowing on this, at this, uh, at this uh, level of interest or, or around this level of interest, you, you are taking a bargain. Okay, now, this one is what drove the market for minor cor correction uh, in April and early May. In the minutes of the last uh, policy meeting of the Central Bank of US Federal Reserve, they say, if the economy continue to make rapid progress toward the committee's goals, I told you before, they have a goal of 2% growth CPI, consumer price. It may be appropriate at some point in upcoming meetings to begin discussing a plan for adjusting the pace of asset purchase. You know what? At the same time, they set interest rates at each meeting. They also set the program of asset purchase. Every, every month, every month, uh, the Federal Reserve buys 120 billion, 120 billion US dollar worth of treasury uh, bonds and also uh, mortgage-backed securities. Why? Why, are, why is the central bank buying these uh, uh, treasury bonds and uh, securities? The bank, the central bank wants to wants to uh, limit, limit the interest rate uh, 
uh, that corporates are paying. Okay, they they want to uh, keep the interest rate low so that they they think they hope uh, corporate and people will keep borrowing. Okay, at a lower cost, and then the money will get back into the economy. Okay, this is what they they design. Okay, but uh, now when when um, these minutes, uh, these kinds of wording, the, the first say, uh, well, maybe we will adjust adjust the, the pace of asset purchase. It means uh, reduce, okay? Uh, they will cut the uh, asset purchase. They will reduce the amount of assets they, they are going to purchase. And uh, people, investors, traders will think, hmm, maybe the, the Fed will, this action will lead to higher interest rates. Which is no, no, not good for stock market. Okay. Hey, look at the 10 year US Treasury yield. Well, uh, before we, we thought it will jump up to 2%, but uh, it is staying around 1.5, 1.6, something like this. Okay. Remember, in 2018, we saw over 3.2% the 10 year US Treasury yield. So I can say we are still in, in, a, in, a, in a very low, uh, low interest rate environment. Okay, so what is going on? And uh, this chart, have a look at this. This chart, I saw, I saw this chart also in the last webinar with you, okay, in April, now it is May. Uh, I can tell you, uh, you can only get this chart when you when you uh, when you click into the Federal Reserve website because uh, look at this this is M2 money supply discontinued um, M2 supply they are still supplying uh, money okay but the word discontinued means the central bank is no longer no longer publishing this kind of data as I told you last month. Okay, why? Look at this. Last year, uh, well, they 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 print a lot of money. They uh, they hand out a lot of cash uh, under, unfortunately, under the pandemic. Okay, coronavirus pandemic. And you know what? Just last year, money supply increased thirty percent. Just last year, uh, two thousand twenty. So. Now the central bank says, "Hey, sorry, uh, we are not going to uh, we are not going to uh, publish any more this kind of data. You know why? So you 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 think do you do you think the money supply will decrease or increase? Of course, it will increase. Okay. So now uh, what what I I, I uh, just want to uh, bring out is that you can see the U.S. economic." recovery is very real. The manufacturing data, the uh, jobless data improving, and the price are going up. CPI, PPI going up, okay, breaking records. So undoubtedly, we, we, are, we are facing a kind of inflation, okay? But uh, at the same time, the central bank is keeping interest rate near to zero, and uh, they, <laughs> they, uh, they want, they don't want you to 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 look at the M2 supply, M2 money supply, and um, well, and for the past month we can see a little bit a minor correction in stock market. I have heard a lot of story about inflation. Uh, inflation is so bad for the uh, for the stock market because uh, the corporate, particularly those uh, tech companies, will see. They are, they are borrowing costs surging. Okay, this is um, well, this is true. But but I want you to look at the market, not just listen to what people say. Okay, have a look at the market. I will go for it with you. This is Dow Jones Industrial Average U.S. Uh, blue chip index. Okay, you can compare this chart with uh, the chart I I gave out last month. Okay. Well, in fact, it, it touched a record high above 35,000, 
level, okay? And then it make a, a correction. How much the correction? Less than five percent, okay? Uh, we we have we have uh, heard a lot of uh, uh, fear. People are uh, people are scared by in, in inflation expectation. They say, oh, inflation is is coming, and uh, raise interest rates are coming up, and um, stocks should be in trouble. So so far we are seeing in the blue chip less than five percent correction. I can say in the blue run in the blue market. Um, well, less than five percent is uh, is everywhere. <laughs> it's uh, nothing to 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 fear about. Okay. So now you see, the Dow Jones Industrial Dow Jones is back above both twenty-day moving average and fifty-day moving average. Ah, maybe some some um, ladies and gentlemen, some friends coming here are, are new to my uh, charts. Okay. I I can tell you easily. Um, it is easy to understand. This free nine in the middle is 20 day moving average. This full free nine is a 50 day moving average. Okay, green horizontal nine over here are our targets. And the blue horizontal nine, this one is a pirate pawn. Okay, or we call it stop loss pawn. Okay, now we are bullish. If the Dow coming back down to 33,000, we will turn bearish. Okay. So the red one, the red horizontal nines are alternative targets on the downside. In fact, this chart is um, well more the same as the chart I showed you last month. Okay, and uh, except that I, I uh, maybe I have I have a raise the the uh, power point here. I raise it increase. Okay, I want to make it a tight tighter. Okay, so you can see. For all the uh, uh, for all those uh, bad news, they say uh, last month we had we had a correction of about less than less than five percent. Okay, I think it is okay. How about the next one, S and P five hundred? Also, the correction is less than five percent, and now it is back up to both twenty day, fifty day moving average. Same, I have a lift. I have increased the power point, okay, to over 4,000, okay. Now, as you can see, our next target, our overhead resistance is at 4,250, 4, okay, just around the upper Bollinger Band, okay. So, uh, I don't know, I don't know if you you are scared by by those uh, news uh, in the past month. Now, this one. Last than 100 index, it is uh, tech heavy. It's all about technology. Okay, the biggest uh, 100 te tech stock names are here. Um, it it um, it breached our key support I showed you last month. So we are turn bearish at this moment. But but uh, you see, it has made a nice rebound. We can call it a correction consolidation. Okay, now uh, I am not very bullish on this one. However, our key resistance is at fourteen thousand. Okay, it's at fourteen thousand. Close, quite close. Okay, what is the correction? Nearly eight percent. Nearly eight uh, percent for the in the past month. Okay, uh, I can say. Uh, we are we are not very bullish at the moment on tech stock, but uh, you know what? I I don't agree. I don't suggest you sort you sort the tech stock at the moment. And you can see uh, is uh, is quite resilient. I we can say is quite strong, putting up a rebound. Okay, let's see for less than 100 index. Let's see. If the key resistance at fourteen thousand is uh, is uh, taken by is taken by the index again, I'm quite I'm quite uh, I'm quite confident it it, it will break uh, fourteen thousand. Okay, but let's see. Market is market. I, I cannot predict this. Okay. Now following, I will show you 
maybe you, you what you are looking forward to some stocks uh, some analysts technical analysis on stocks and but uh, as usual I give you a little bit uh, reminding okay reminding okay do not trade with technical analysis alone okay for example technical analysis um, does not take into all those uh, macroeconomy data uh, the environment that I spent the last uh, 10 minutes on okay so you have to open your eyes open your ears and listen to know what uh, what the market is doing how the market is doing and then you use technical analysis to assist you to make a uh, entry or exit of a trade okay do not just play with uh, technical analysis and uh, this is uh, no no okay so um, I hope you understand what I mean so and also this webinar uh, I, I just prepared all these uh, PowerPoint webinars for you just for you to experience how we are going to uh, to build the market we have macroeconomy we have uh, individual corporate stories okay and then we have a technical analysis okay you have to look around not just concentrate on on ta technical analysis and as you can see on on the on the youtube there are many youtubers talking about technical analysis hey i see the price breaking blah 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 and um, they seldom talk about the, the the basic the fundamental the economy macroeconomy okay so you are lucky if, if you you are hit you are now with me <laughs> just kidding okay now facebook okay last month end of april uh we say uh that uh this this chart this chart sorry i have to tell you first this chart is the exact the level i keep the levels that i used in our last webinar okay first target 315 second target 326 okay just a, a few days maybe a, a few days after our webinar last month april it broke both targets okay now it is uh so now where is the current situation like this all right this is updated okay now the historical record high is as uh, 332 just about 332 and then now our our first target is as 342 and then second target 355 okay we look at this our pirate point our stop loss has uh, accordingly increased to 303 303 okay so what's going on with facebook first quarter wow earnings earning per share jump nearly double year on year okay and it also exceed uh, expectation okay revenue nearly 50 percent okay it friend uh, thanks to the ad, ad advertisement price uh increase uh all these uh, all these good earnings come true okay um I can tell you at the moment the price level is not very stressed okay look at the rsi rsi 63 is still below the overbought region okay so we say stock price is not very stressed stressed okay so we are currently bullish uh, on facebook still bullish okay so my, remind, I remind you, Facebook is also a very big tech name. Okay, so some people say tech stocks are in trouble, but you have a look uh, in details. Facebook is good. Okay, Amazon. Now this is once again this is our our last chart, uh, uh, the chart I showed you la, uh, last month April. Okay, after the webinar. Amazon broke about both target. This I, I think this should be record high, record high. And then after that, 
it retreat. It retreated back below our uh, our uh, stop loss. Well, in fact, if the stop price rose rise in this way, our stop loss. This is our stop loss last time last month. But accordingly, if the price if the stop price surge like this, our stop loss level parapon should be lift to here. Okay, so it has broken the stop loss point already. What happened now? Uh, yeah, this is uh, I want to point you out. Point out, it hit our second target last time. Okay, now this will be update. As you can see, the 20-day moving average has crossed below the 50-day one. Not a good sign. So now, now what? We were bullish last month, and then the short price hit both targets, and now it dropped down. It retreats. So what? We turn bearish. Okay. Now also, Amazon, Amazon.com also released its first quarter earnings. Not bad, I can say not bad. And recently, uh, Amazon is buying is buying what? I MGM Studio. Okay. It, they are going get getting into the entertainment uh, video streaming business. Okay. But uh, from high to know from the record price high to the recent um, correction low, the stock price lost 15%. Okay, this is uh, Amazon. And um, maybe up to here, I have to tell you a little secret. Okay, uh, the secret is I cannot predict. Okay, when, when people, when some traders tell you about uh, his prediction, blah, blah, blah. You have to think twice. Why? I don't believe in prediction, okay? Uh, I suggest now you look at operations. What operation? Just like the last, uh, the last uh, slide I showed you on um, Amazon, okay? Okay, uh, all right. Okay, maybe we go for it. In Amazon, we broke two uh, upside targets. Okay, but I, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you how to treat the targets. Normally, on the first target, we break the first target. We take fifty percent profit. Okay, when it break the stop price, break the second target, we we will take further uh, profit. Okay. And leave and leave the um, the remaining amount to flow to uh, to to get increasing or decreasing. But down to the stop loss level, we just stop loss. Okay. So this is operation, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. When in operation, in fact, we are we are. I can, I have to say we are not predicting uh, price or blah blah blah. We are just uh, in a grand scheme of operation we look at it as i told you uh, we look at the macroeconomic situation market sentiment well you know uh, my colleague uh, dominica showed you the market bus which showed the market sentiment and then we we streamline to which stock sectors are, 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 are doing well okay we then on individual stocks are we bullish or bearish and then we use Technical analysis to 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 set stop loss level, target levels. Okay, this are this is all what, ladies and gentlemen. This is all operation. Okay. In prediction, I can tell you, we are always wrong. Okay, but in operation, we take profits, and uh, in 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 some back case, we stop loss. Okay. Well, I can tell you one more is. The market is a continuum, okay? Market never sleep, okay? Uh, when Hong Kong market is closed, well, Europe market is up. When market, Europe market is, European market is, is closed, US market is running hot, okay? Markets never sleep, but as a trader or investor, you have to make it a discreet story. I mean, you have to take profit. And at the same time, 
in 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 some bad case you have to take loss okay cut it okay so we say the market is a continuum but your trading story should be discreet okay and oh, i know i know some some friends will say hey mr lamb i i, I just trade like uh, warren buffett okay value trader we hold it we hold a stock for six years ten years okay uh, no matter it it increase the stock price increase or decrease we hold it for six years ten years fine this is good no problem this is another way of investing but now we are talking about trading okay you, you we have to make a sweet decision okay to take profit and to cut loss okay let's move forward now apple um this is the chart the levels i sold last month april we hit the first target 138 okay and then it dropped back down as you can see this is an update chart return um return varies also at the moment because of the crossover this one 20 we call it a 2050 crossover cross down okay the trend the 20 day moving average is crossing below the 50 day ones okay not good not good at least we we are not bullish at the moment i can say what's happening in oh you can see apple's earnings are not bad okay the second uh, second quarter earnings revenues good and also they increase the dividend to 22 cents per share okay and they have initiated a new 90 billion us dollar share buybacks not not bad not bad but as i as i as i discussed the teleco configuration is not very accommodating at the moment so uh let's look at others more interesting stocks okay <laughs> now oh sorry and this one i i have to be i'm very honest with you this one shows the levels that i, I showed you last month april okay at, at that time uh i said it, it will it, it on operation in our operation it, first target 800 second target nine nine hundred okay record high however in reality tesla returned back below the key support okay so cut loss this is a losing trade if you trade this one okay and uh cut loss okay so what is the update the update is this one same story as you can see in, in all our other big tech names amazon apple tesla 2050 cross down is uh, not very good although now we can see tesla is rebounding okay well i will be i i i will be uh bullish again on tesla once it breaks up it breaks above the key resistance at 675 okay of course we have look in, have to look into the uh, fundamental not bad i can say okay revenue increase net profit Ah, in the lab profit and first quarter, 438 million US dollar lab profit. In that lab profit, there was 100 million dollar from Bitcoin sales. Okay, you see, um, Elon Musk, the Tesla CEO, uh, is very vocal on, on cryptocurrency these days and uh, making a lot of waves in the cryptocurrency market and it's very interesting very interesting but um i think people looking at uh, tesla also will look at its uh, vehicle delivery and now the ta the company targets it will deliver deliver um minimum 750,000 vehicles this year a 50 percent increase over years okay so this is tesla story but uh it, it, i i think tesla is the most hard hitted uh uh test stock within the last uh, month uh during the corruption okay so now we um well we are not very bullish on these stocks 
how about uh, this one? This is a new one I, I'm talking, uh, I'm mentioning to you, Ford Motor, okay? Another car, automobile stock, okay? It seems to be, it seems to be performing much, much better than Tesla, all right? So this is what, this is a declining channel, price channel. Now we see a breakout, okay? In fact, uh, I have increased, I, I prepared this chart uh, several days ago and uh, just, uh, uh, just uh, at, at the close of yesterday, I have, I have to uh, amend the chart levels again. I have to leave the targets and leave the pair point again because uh, for the last few days, it, it make a, a big jump. And also you look at the, uh, um, this momentum indicator, RSI, it's very good, it's very good. And uh, we do not see um, divergence at the moment. What is divergence? Okay, I will tell you later. Okay, I can I can say this cover this technical configuration is still very strong for Ford Motor. What happened? Indeed, what happened? Okay. Also, first quarter, not bad. First quarter results, not bad. Have a look. Okay, big out from a Bravis channel. Okay, this one. Very beautiful, we can say, on technical analysis term. And then, you know what? I, I, I wonder if uh, we have uh, some car, some car guys or car girls here who like uh, automobiles, who like cars. I'm one of them. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Just uh, a, a few, uh, one or two weeks ago, it, uh, it launched, it announced a new type of truck. Have you heard about this? The Ford 150 Lightning All Electric. Okay. Uh, within 48 hours of the sales uh, open, they they received over 40,000 orders for this one. Okay. So amazing, amazing. Ah, maybe I I don't have I should not show this chart, show this picture for too long. Otherwise, people will say I'm uh, advertising. Okay. So. This is a reminder of why Ford Motor is is um, is doing so so well. Also, also I want to show you um, as my colleague uh, showed you before, Market Bus. You know what? In Market Bus, we can we can have a watch list. In fact, I have draw a watch list. Okay, let me see it clear for Ford Motor. Okay, you know what? Oh, can you see the color is a little bit is a little bit dark here. And uh, ninety two percent positive orientation for for the for those uh, news or social media coverage of Ford Motor. Okay, whenever I I I I'm, I'm research for a stock, uh, I look at the macroeconomic background. Okay, the U.S. economy is recovering. Okay, fine. And how about the company? The company news about the company is 92%. I hope you can you can see clearly. 92% uh, positive. Okay, so far. And uh, then I know that then I know that sentiment around this stock is good. Okay, and you can this also justify the breakout from the uh, uh, bearish declining channel. Okay. For the news, uh, well, uh, if I have time, I will read them. If no, I, I just read all these uh, parameter. They are very helpful, very, very helpful. Okay, so let's go back to some stocks. Walmart, Walmart, uh, retailer, okay, super, supermarket chain. These are the levels I showed you last month, April. Okay, eventually it, it broke the first target, 143, and still, and still stands above the key support, 135. So how about the latest stock chart? This one. I have moved the key support up to 138, okay? Now our overhead resistance is 144.7, and the next target should be 147.9, okay? This means if we hit the first target, I will take 50% profit. And if you hit the second target, I would take the rest of the profit or 
I will leave, I will take some profit and leave some amount as, the, as a stock, uh, stock price increase, okay? Of course, at the same time, if it hit a uh, first target and then second target, I will at the same time accordingly increase this key support, okay? In case the price just reaches back to the key support, okay, I'm out. This is, the, this is uh, our philosophy of trading, all right? Now, this is a Walmart. You can see um, big tech names are doing, uh, well, consolidating, I can say. However, as uh, we have uh, the economy rebounding, recovering, we have vaccination in good progress and society markets are opening up. We, we see, we see the retail stocks like this are doing well, okay? Yeah, this uh, parameter of the earnings, not bad, not bad. Okay, remember the government, US government, give handing out cash, okay, stimulus cash. The cash, most of them will, 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 will well, will run into supermarket, okay, people buying necessities, daily stuff, something like this. And you know what, Walmart just report that they are seeing increasing number of shoppers at both their physical stores and also on their website. Okay, amazing. And also the company increased, raised the full year guidance. Okay, that's why, that's why we can see this retail stock's price is holding up quite well. Okay, next one, also Costco wholesale also a retail stock like Walmart, okay? What can you see? The rising 20-day moving average is providing support to stock price. Well, it is a very steady climber. However, look at this. Uh, I mentioned um, divergence a few minutes ago. This I want to tell you in details, okay? Steady climber, okay? Now, can you see that? This one, the RSI has run up to 70. 70 is the overbought region, overbought level. And then from over 70, it coming down. At the same time, stock price is coming up. We call this bearish divergence. Bearish divergence. It means not good. <laughs> it means that the momentum the momentum of the stock price. Okay, we can see the stock price is uh, climbing uh, steadily, okay? However, the momentum you can see is decreasing, okay? This is a, a kind of alarm we have, to, we have to notice, okay? Okay, later today, it will, Costco will also report its uh, third quarter result, okay? This is, uh, I, I, at least I, I will, I will, I will take a cautious, cautious stance on this stock, okay? When I see this uh, technical configuration, maybe the fundamental story is good, okay? But I will monitor it closely when we, I, I see this uh, divergence, okay? Once again, I, once again, various divergence, the price is, stock price is increasing at the same time, RSI is decreasing from over, overbought region. Okay, okay, this means the uh, stock increase momentum is, is uh, well, weakening. Okay, so let's see, maybe next, next month, when I pull up this chart again, we will have another story, all right? Let's go, crafts, hints, okay. Also, as you can see today, I have, uh, I have shown you several retails and uh, food, and stable food stable stocks because they are doing well as as i mentioned very early uh, there was uh, this webinar the stocks i'm talking about they are having good move they are going having good trend and they're having interesting stories okay this one look at this these are high we see this high is higher than this high higher 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 highs okay and we can see the rsi is not very well aggressive at the moment so good 
all right? In fact, in fact, we are we are we are around the 50 week high region for this stock. Okay, but I, I do not find this uh this stock very stressed, uh very stretched at the moment. I mean still have upside. All right, and you can see the 20 day moving average is providing very good support at the moment. All right. Yeah. All right. So What's the next one we have? Uh, Starbucks, Starbucks. Okay, let's see. Good. Uh, it have uh, it have it is uh, riding on the bullish channel before, but uh, in April what happened? It start a downward channel. So now we are we are not very bullish on these stocks. Okay, unless we see it, it climb back to the key resistance as 150 uh, sorry 115 115 which is around the upper bollinger band okay we have to see the stock climbing back up to this level and then we may change our view on this one otherwise we we, we say it is still in a bearish channel okay not good okay these are uh, these are uh, second quarter earnings in, in fact, the ticket side that is the every every uh, every transaction, uh, every transaction is up. However, the traffic is still low. Back in uh, in the fiscal second quarter, okay, the traffic is still decreasing, maybe due to the pa uh, pandemic at that time. However, the company also increased its full year earnings outlook. Okay, very confident, very confident. Okay. So this is Starbucks, and uh, our 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 eyes are <laughs> focusing on this key resistance. Okay, if uh, if it keeps trading below this key resistance, it stands higher chance of returning to this uh, lower target, it is downside targets. Okay, so you can see also the all the uh, moving average are also turning. Okay, okay. So this is stop us, and then oh, uh, and then I I I said in the pandemic post and pandemic era when things are opening up when people are back uh well are back to uh well trying to get in back to normal life we have uh progress in vaccination we have it retail stocks doing well. And at the same time, under the inflation uh, expectation, rising inflation expectation, another sector, another kind of stocks are also doing well. It is bank stocks. Okay, I will talk about two, two bank stocks today. One, Citigroup. You see, it just speak about a triangle pattern. Okay. We call it what? We call it a continuation bullish pattern. Okay, bullish continuation. Okay, just like a coil. It uh, for some part for for the past uh, three months, it, it just like a coil, and then maybe at the end of last month, boom, it just broke out. Okay, bullish. And um, I can say uh, for the for the uh, latest uh release corporate release of earnings banks are doing are doing well very well okay strong investment banking revenue and also before they they have uh, made a lot they made a lot of provisions for bad loans okay now they say oh it is not necessary we have to release the reserve back to back to the um well release out the reserve there's no need to keep so a large portion of capital for for reserve for bad loans, okay? It means the situation is getting better. At the same time, Citigroup also announced that it will exceed retail bankings in 13 countries, mostly in Asia and Europe, okay? Well, they are, they are not they are not operate a huge network of 
of branches anymore. Good move. Okay, so this is a wedge, and uh, this this um, this pattern is quite good. I, I want you to have a have a look. So our, now our upper target, upside target is at 81 and 85. Okay, stop loss. If you see CD group back down to 73, okay, it's around the 50-day moving average and the lower Bollinger Band. Okay, well we call we call it oh the the uh, the the short term bull run is uh, is over. So we have to we have to turn a bearish, but but still it is still far higher above the stop loss level. Okay, this is Citigroup. And then JP Morgan, the biggest bank and, and uh, the big brother of Wall Street, I can say. Same, similar to Citibank, it, it, it went through for the past three months, it went through a consolidating period. And then boom, it came out. And the 20 day moving average is providing very good support. What did the bank say? First quarter earnings, good. Okay, same. Same, uh, it released some reserve provided for bad loan before. Okay, now they release the fund. Okay, meaning market is turning better. Trading also trading operation. Okay, and now this is what uh, the CEO uh, uh, said. We believe that the economy has the potential to have extremely robust multi-year growth very confident and very bullish okay so um i i can't see why we have to take a, a um bearish view or, or on the stock market at the moment okay we are still still seeing bullish sign sign for the whole market all right so this is jp morgan hey, also i want to share with you jp morgan you know what it's also in my in my watch list. All right, I will show you. Maybe a Dominica showed you before. So the orientation of the of the uh, maybe it is hard to see. Sixty nine percent positive. So most of those news stories about this bank, J P Morgan, is uh, 69 percent are positive. Okay, I I like this. Uh, sentiment reading okay so that I, I most of the time i i don't read into details of those news i just need the indicators like this okay when i get into jp morgan egg the the orientation sentiment market sentiment on these stocks is good okay i move forward this is the point all right so ladies and gentlemen these are u.s stocks are most interesting US stocks I want to share with you and following is uh, Hong Kong and Singapore stocks okay now Hong Kong Hang Seng Index I keep, I keep this key resistance 29,400 this is the same uh, the same key resistance I used last month April okay for the whole month it just uh, uh it just uh, went below and for the past several sessions just like other apac uh, stock market it, it it gained momentum and then now it is challenging the key resistance here okay this key resistance is uh, uh, uh and uh it's quite strong at the moment i can say okay maybe next month when, when we talk again on this one uh i don't know I don't know, let the market decide whether it will break up or break down, okay? So in Hong Kong stocks, I want to share with you four, four Hong Kong stocks today. Alibaba, this is an update chart and uh, very bad. Sorry, I have to say this. It remained kept by a declining trend line, which was, uh, which was drawn in from October. So it has been done, it has been in place since last October. And uh, and now the stock is below both 
20 and 50 moving average. Okay, I have already lowered the key resistance. Okay, and now the immediate support is at 199. If broken, 180 will come. Okay, what happened? What happened? In March quarter, it report a net loss of 5.5 billion yuan. It is, is the company's first uh, quarterly loss, as far as I know. What happened? Because it had to pay 18 billion yuan anti-monopoly fund fine in China. It, had, it was uh, fined by authorities in China for monopoly, monopoly practice, so-called. Okay, you see the trend line. Okay, so bearish on, on Alibaba. How about another big stock, big tech name, 10 cent, 700. Okay, I have, I have, I have lowered the key resistance already. And uh, despite this recent rebound, uh, the configuration is still weak. The technical configuration is still very weak. Okay. It is well, I have to remind you that Tencent's first quarter earnings beat forecast better than expectation. But you know what? Um, this kind of big test stocks, uh, they remain under some, uh, some crowd, some uncertainty, I can say. Uh, because they are always, they are always just like Alibaba. They are always the uh, monopoly practice uh, target of of the authorities because they are they are very big. Okay, so until until uh, we bound up to six fifty Hong Kong dollar, uh, I, I'm still bearish on this one. Okay, downside target is at uh, five hundred and sixty six and five hundred and thirty nine. Okay, so be careful. This kind of big technique, they, they they are all they are easy. I, I can say they um man, many uh news stories will talk about them. Every move, every big move, every um, minor move will be reported. <clears throat> will be reported. Okay, of course, uh, media always uh always. We will focus on some bad things, <laughs> particularly on those big company in China. Okay, watch out. Now this one Xiaomi uh, has some good news. I have to say, has some good news. In fact, I I was uh, I was uh, cautiously bullish on this one last month in April. You can check that. Okay, at that time I I drew this triangle. It broke out already. It has broken out already. Okay bullish shine and then you can see stock price is tracing the upper Bollinger Band okay and also you can see the RSI is indicating upward momentum and not up to over spot region still 67 okay so this one is very interesting what happened well good news the company has been removed from US backlist uh, the U.S. has blacklisted some companies. Uh, well, the uh, U.S. government say it suspect, suspected these companies, the blacklisted companies, have something to do with the Chinese military. Okay, but uh, just uh, one or two days ago, the U.S. say mm, uh, Xiaomi uh, one eight one zero is is not on the backlist anymore. So we see the rebound in stock price. Okay. Oh, stop loss. Uh, stop loss. I I've um I have uh, tightened to twenty five point nine. Okay, not seven. Twenty five point nine. Okay, it is uh well at both around both twenty day and fifty day moving average. As you can see, for this kind of stops, uh, I always make a very tight, very tight uh stop loss because uh they 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 just swing. Uh, and a quick extent all the time. Okay, so take care of this one. Ah, also, I sold you. I have to show you. Back on my list, watch list. I also have Xiaomi, and uh, 
just see how the orientation, the sentiment is doing. 92% positive. Okay, 92% positive on Xiaomi market sentiment. So, not bad, not bad. Okay, and the next one, ah, China menu dairy. Okay, uh, it uh, it provide milk product, dairy products, uh, in China, Hong Kong, and uh, the pattern is very interesting. I want to show you. Have a look. RSI, we have RSI, we have a breakout of a declining trend line. Okay, here, and then. We have another breakout on the stock price here. So we are very bullish on this uh, this stock, okay? At the start, we say we are going to say, to tell you how to ex uh, enter a trade. This is the point how we enter and focus and enter a trade like this, okay? We have one breakout RSI, we have another breakout on stock price. Good move, okay? So our stop loss here is 42.9. Okay, uh, we we are now seeing the stock can move up to 50.4 Hong Kong dollar. What happened? Uh, Danone, Danone is a French, also a very uh, a big international, well, it is a French company, uh, food company. Okay, it reported that it has just sold its 9.8% stack in menu. Then why, why we have still a, a price increase in menu? Because the market say the uncertainty is clear already. Okay, it is it is a fact already. No one can change. Okay. Now, also the RSI is showing momentum. Sixty five, good level. Not not up to overbought region. As overbought region is uh, seventy. But you know what? Even if the RSI is uh, reach 70 level with we, we don't we, well it is uh overbought region but but we we don't say oh it is overbought and we should we should exceed the trade no we have to see if there's any any uh bearish divergent signal that one i showed you before okay you know what the a stock stock price can stay in overbought regions for very very long time okay so don't just see a 70 level and say oh it is overbought i get out <laughs> not that case okay so this is menu uh china man menu dairy uh good stock i, I want to recommend okay now singapore um uh, singapore is uh, i i also you know uh we i am in a uh, apac team asia pacific uh, I look at Singapore stocks. I also looking at uh, uh, Australian, Japanese stocks, and uh, I found this Singapore straight time index STI. We call it. We call also always call it STI, topping out for the uh, from in March and April topping out, and it uh, it make a correction in May, and now we have to see. We have to see a return back to this 3,240 level, just around the upper Bollinger Band. We have to see the index to return to this level again to turn our wheel bullish. Okay, we are not very bullish. In fact, we are not very bullish at the moment. Okay, so we have to let the market tell us. Okay, I hope that. Later, this RSI will break out, will break out and give us the first bullish sign. Okay. Now, two stocks, two Singapore stocks, I want to I want to mention today. DBS, the biggest bank stock in Singapore. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, what bank stock again? Uh, I meant uh, I introduced uh, Citigroup. I introduced uh, J P Morgan. Chase and now in Singapore, yes, also in Singapore, bank stocks are doing well. This one, the biggest bank stock, DBS. All right, very good channel, very good channel. And there's no 
that I I do not see any uh, any signal of reversing at the moment. Okay, in 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 um in normal terms, we say this stock is there's no fatigue, there's no sign of fatigue for this stock at the moment. Still running very strong. Okay, I have tightened the uh, key support to twenty eight point six Singapore dollar. Okay, upside we are looking at thirty point eight. 31.7 high chance very high chance okay you know what dbs first quarter lab profit hit record high 2 billion 2 billion singapore dollar okay wealth management fee incomes higher however the lab interest income well not very good not very good okay just like uh just like uh, uh well, uh, some of the stocks we mentioned today, it is around 50 week high, the region, okay? Bullish channel, as you can see, okay? So um, this one, this one, I can tell you, the stop loss level, people always ask me, I mean, Mr. Lamb, how do you set the levels? 30.8, 31.7? Well, um, usually we take the normal, the current price, the current price to the uh, key support. Okay, let's say we have uh, one, we have uh, one, one point something dollar here, and then from the current price to the second target, we should be higher than the distance between the current price and the stop loss. That is, when we gain, we have to, when we gain. Let's say uh, when we lose, okay, when we lose uh, the at current price to the stop loss, when we lose one dollar, okay, our target should be from the current price to the target should be over one dollar, okay, bigger, bigger than the potential loss. You understand? Okay. In fact, we are doing our uh, one point one, okay. If the current price to the stop loss is one. The current price to the second price target should be 1.1. Okay. That is the risk reward ratio. Okay. We always say, or in this case, the reward to risk ratio should be over one. Okay. I hope this uh this uh, explain well to you. Okay. Next one, a very famous one, Singapore Air Nine. And uh Back in March and April, we had a double top here. At that time, um, maybe we, we are talking about vaccine. We, ha we had high hope in vaccines, vaccination, and also the pandemic is, uh, well, will pass very soon. But well, later we see some um, bad news from India, okay, from Japan, and, and we dropped down back to $4.4. Okay, for the past several sessions, yes, we, we see a rebound, rebound, but as uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, in other kinds of stock bearish on which we are bearish, I'm not very bullish on this one at the moment and have to see it cross back about 5.25 Singapore dollar to make it a call, a bull call. Now we have to see, we have to wait and see, okay. You know what? Uh, for the past financial year, Singapore Airlines reported 4.3 billion Singapore dollar loss, let loss, huge. Okay, much bigger loss than expected, and it's much bigger loss than prior year. So for two years, uh, this uh, airline company is making a loss for two years. Okay, and um, to make me a think twice on, on this think twice about uh, about getting bullish on this airline stock is that he has just issued a 6.2 billion Singapore dollar convertible bonds, and uh, it means uh, it, it need cash at the moment. All right, so you know what? This this number is uh, is very tragic. I I think only 13.4% passengers seats will fill. Okay. 
you, you know what? And uh, you you are operating a whole uh, a whole jet airline fleet, and uh, you are employing people, and only thirteen percent seats were filled, and um, this is not good, really not good. Okay, ah, you know, uh, we look forward before we look forward to a uh, so-called travel bubble. That is, uh, we Hong Kong and Singapore can can well can be communicating. People can go can travel between Hong Kong, Singapore with their vaccination. But um, well, it seems that uh, the authorities are calling calling off this plan at the moment. So not very good for Singapore Airlines. Okay, that's why we are not Buddhist at the moment. Okay, let's hope the pandemic will pass and then we will consider this airline again. Okay, but not at the moment. All right. Ah, yeah. This is a sign I want you to have a look. That is a related, uh, is a RSI, the momentum indicator is uh, growing. Okay, it's growing. But uh, I can say it is off the worst, the worst level. But um, I have to see the price same. I have to see the price back up to this level to reconsider it again. All right, thank you. Now, I make a little con conclusion and then I let you ask some questions. Inflation expectation, well, uh, for the whole month, I have been hearing a lot of these stories, but please, ladies and gentlemen, my, friend of, uh, my friends of uh, Philip Futures, think about also money, how much money, uh, central banks are printing and consider you have to think about or you have to guess uh, where investor people with cash people with money will put their cash in okay okay test store maybe now is underperforming but you know what as i as i mentioned as i introduced you we have a supermarket chain we have banks, we have, well, car stocks, they are good, they are doing well, they are doing well, okay? This is my conclusion, still bullish on the US stocks, okay? Uh, back to the prediction, back to the prediction um, problem. And uh, I remember uh, um, a gentleman asked me, hey Ming, do you foresee, do you predict a market crash in six months and uh, well at that time I say I, I cannot do this kind of prediction because I'm I'm in operations I will draw up all those uh, targets and most importantly more importantly the stop loss level okay currently I'm still bullish on US stocks and I as you can see on those major index Dow Jones less than 100 index I have my uh, stop loss level, okay? If the situation change, my view will also change. But until then, uh, I'm still, I can say, on general, I'm still, we are still bullish on US stocks, okay? Hong Kong, yes, as you can see, the big tech names are always in trouble, okay? You know what? I have to tell you, this thing. Sorry, maybe you will find me uh, uh, quite uh, quite a lengthy lengthy talk on this point again and again. I I bring up this point for every webinar with, uh, with you every month because I really see that we are not in a very good shape here. U.S.-China relationship. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, you have to you have to keep focusing on this one. Uh, if there is any um, well news, objective news regarding this uh, this um, category, U.S. China relationship, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. Uh, do you know? Maybe you have known. You have known that the U.S. has already delisted free telecom stocks, uh, Chinese telecom stocks, in the U.S. Okay, and. Uh, I, I think more will come, and uh, until until these two superpower are, are making good friends again. But now they are not friendly. 
I can I can say. So watch out, watch out this one. And also, this is why you have to you have to be cautious when trading Hong Kong stocks. Okay, Hong Kong will be will be well uh, greatly affected if there is something wrong be something wrong between the U.S. China relationship. Okay. Okay, I will I will bring up this point next month again. <laughs> okay, Singapore stocks are uh, again as you can see, we have to see uh if if uh it returned to previous highs uh we we saw in March and April to confirm a bullish a bullish one. Okay, now it's, it is still in consolidation, but you can look at those bank stocks DBS. Is on a, I can I can still see it is on a, in a bullish channel. Okay, so this is a, what uh, I want to bring up today for this month. Any questions? Uh, I, I can I can answer. Thank you very much right. indeed. Thank you very much, Ming. Since time is up, we shall not do the live Q and A session, but instead we will respond to the questions we received via email. Uh, yeah, so we will conclude the webinar here. So thank you again, Ming, and thank you very much, everybody, for your time tuning into this webinar tonight. If you have any other questions, you can send them to us via the survey that should appear at the end of the webinar. And we will also be sending everyone a link to today's webinar recording so you can watch it again if you'd like to. Yeah, that's all for today. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.